right, hello. Uh, this is Pastor Victor, and uh, I want to share something powerful with you in this uh, today's video. And uh, it's titled Four Keys to Activate Grace. Four Keys to Activate Grace. You know, uh, we could go deeper in this, but this one I'm just making it a summary. And uh, just giving you this key that you can take it your own and in your own spare time, you can meditate on it and elaborate it more and know that the grace of God can be activated. That's one thing you need to know about grace. Maybe in another video I'll share with you dynamics of the grace of God. But one thing you need to know about the grace of God that it can be activated. Grace don't just work for you. Even though grace is available, it's been given abundantly through Christ Jesus or uh, through the finished work of Christ and all of that. Grace does not just work for people. That's why not everybody is saved. Not everybody is enjoying the blessings of God. Not everybody is enjoying the favor of God. Grace must be activated. You heard me right. Activation in the kingdom is important. Even the promise of God, the word of God, until we are activated, the word of God is not going to work for you. The word of God to us is potential energy. It's your faith in God's word that activates it, that turns it into kinetic energy that produces power. For advantage. So there are keys to activate the grace of God and I want to share with you in this video. And number one key to activate the grace of God is the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ. The knowledge of God and Jesus Christ. I read a scripture from 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 2 to 3. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, sorry, verse 3. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. So grace can be multiplied. You activate the grace of God through knowledge. Knowledge. The more knowledge of God that you have, the more the grace of God is activated on your inside. The Bible said in uh, John chapter 1 verse 17 that Jesus Christ, the law was given by Moses. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. I mean, Jesus personified the grace of God. He is the grace of God. So that implies that the more knowledge you have of Jesus, the more God's grace is activated in your life. So if you want to activate the grace of God, which is the unmerited favor of God, which is the divine influence of the Spirit, working in a man's life that produces results on the outside, if you want to activate this grace to produce results in your life, one key, number one key is the knowledge of Jesus. The more knowledge you have, the more revelation you have of Jesus, who he is, his person, his finished work, the more the grace of God multiplies and is activated for you. So if I were you, I would get into the word of God and to get to know, you know more about Jesus and his finished work. Number two key to activate the grace of God is faith. Faith. Faith is important. Faith is According to the Bible, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is a vital force in the kingdom of God. And I read a scripture unto you. It said, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. It said, For by grace are ye saved through faith. By grace are ye saved through faith. And out of yourself, it is the gift of God. For by grace are ye saved. So it is not just the grace of God that brings salvation. It is grace and faith. It is a combination of grace and faith that brings salvation, that bring, produces results in a man's life. So even when you come in contact with the man of God who carries the grace of God upon his life, for you to contact that grace upon that man of God's life to work for you, it has to come by faith. Look at the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says she heard of Jesus. She heard of Jesus. That, because the Bible says faith cometh by hearing hearing by the word of God. When she heard of Jesus, who is the grace of God, her faith came alive. And so what did she do? She told herself, if I may touch Jesus' garment, I'll be here. So she came in the price. And the Bible says she touched the hem of Jesus. She touched her. She's already determined on her. There was that conviction in her spirit. That is faith. Conviction. So that sponsored his, her action to come and touch the hem of Jesus. And when she touched the hem of Jesus, I would say immediately, the grace of God was released. Virtue went out of Jesus and healed that woman. That woman was healed. That's powerful. So salvation comes as a combination of grace and faith. Not just grace alone, not just faith alone. It is grace and faith. So anytime we release our faith into the grace of God, 
what happens is that it produces results. The grace of God is activated. Grace is what brings the results in a man's life. Without grace, you're going to struggle in life. Without grace, everything you're going to do is going to struggle. You're going to have a hard time. But when the grace of God is a man's life, it's upon you. I mean, you become a mystery to men. You command strange results. No man arises by himself. Every man is aided by God's grace. So, and you need that grace to work for you. And it is activated by faith. Number three key to activate the grace of God is praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4. It says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself. But he that prophesied edified the church. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. I love speaking in tongues. Man, it's so powerful. I mean, one of the most powerful gifts of the Spirit in, in the Bible is speaking in tongues. If you don't speak in tongues, you are not going to experience the grace of God in a higher dimension. I can guarantee you that. Speaking in tongues transports you. It activates the, in fact, it activates the grace covenant. That's what it really does. It activates the grace covenant in a man's life and causes the grace of God to come upon you and begin to work. You can pray in tongues for four hours, five hours, and be the same. Something will come upon you. And if you begin to command the happenings around you and, and begin to open up things, open your destiny to possibilities, it creates an atmosphere around a man's life that attracts the favor and the blessings of the Lord. Speaking in tongues is so important. If you are not speaking in tongues, you need to ask God to give you that gift of tongue speaking. The fourth key in this teaching to activate the grace of God is the law of sowing and reaping. Giving. Most people don't understand giving. That's why their giving don't produce results. When you have a revelation of giving, your giving will always produce results. Most people, when they give to God, it's either out of desperation, out of pressure, or out of to impress people, or you know, and all of that. I mean, that's why their giving is not working. Uh, but if you know, I mean, giving is so powerful to work for you big time. I read a scripture unto you. It says, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 and 8. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Now look at the next verse, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace, I love this, to abound toward you, that you having always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. He's saying that if you give the verse 8, you can't claim the verse 8 of this scripture without the verse 7. The word end that begins the verse 8 is a conjunction linking it to the verse 7, which talks about cheerful giving. The man that gives cheerfully, the man that gives without reservation, the man that gives from his heart without compulsion, without pressure, that the Bible amplifies it, his heart is in his giving. That man who gives cheerfully, lovingly, with love, seen it as a privilege to give to God. So I would say that my God will make his grace to abound, activate the grace of God upon his life. And you know what will happen? The Bible says you have sufficiency. Grace gives you sufficiency. And you are bound unto a good, good word. That means you receive grace that gives you the sufficiency of the spirit that you can do mighty things for God. So these four keys, I believe you put it to work, is going to help you activate the grace of God in your life. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Uh, thank you for watching this video. And uh, I want you to do a couple of things for me after watching this video. Please, to help us reach more people and impact the world for Jesus, I would like you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's the best place to be. I've told you we be loading up videos every week for you to really, really impact your life. Then also, you know, you can go to our Facebook page and also like our page. And uh, I, I believe that uh, mighty things will happen. Today I feel impressed to pray for anybody who needs healing. If you need healing right now, I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the healing anointing has come upon me right now to heal. So you can put your hand wherever you're hurting. And I'm going to speak healing into your body. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, wherever is watching, that is ill, sick, disease, I rebuke the sickness. I rebuke the infirmity. Go from there. Be shielded in the name of Jesus. 
by the finished work of Christ, I demand your healing now. Sickness, get out of their body. Every pain, every infirmity, disease of any kind, deafness, lameness, paralysis, in the name of Jesus, out of their body. Now in Jesus' mighty name, be shield from the crown of your to the soles of your feet. Be healed in your blood, in your skin, in your body, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank God for healing. Healing power is flowing right now. And you are healed in Jesus' name. Do what you could not do before. And please call us and let us know the testimony of your healing. In Jesus' name, amen.